Hi, everybody. Um, with your permission, I'd like to share the following uh, reading to you. Uh, it comes from a prize winning author. Her name is Isabel Wilkerson. I'm not real familiar with her, but uh, I want to find out more. And I just want to give you a little preemptive information first. Uh, she is a Pulitzer Prize winning author. Um, her first book was called The Warmth of the Other Suns, uh, which I don't know anything about, but it does tell the story of African Americans fleeing the American South during the Jim Crow era. But not once in her 600 page narrative does the word racism appear. What she said is, I found that the word racism was insufficient to capture the rigid social hierarchy and the re repression that they were born into. So she adopted the term caste and caste system to convey the enormity of what we are dealing with here. In her newest book, Caste, The Origins of Our Discontents, the author explores that human hierarchy and uh, describes America as an old house with a caste system that is essential to its operation as are the studs and Joyce that we cannot see in the physical buildings we call home. So the following is an excerpt from the book, Cast the Origins of Our Discontents. So I hope you'll bear with me. I hope I have your permission to uh, share this with you. I found it pretty riveting and uh, it's caused me a lot of reflection and I hope it does the same for you. The inspector trained his infrared lens on a mishappen bow in the ceiling, an invisible beam of light searching the layers of lath to test what the eyes could not see. The house had been built generations ago, and I had noticed the slightest welt in a corner of plaster in a spare bedroom, and I had chalked it up to idiosyncrasy. Over time, the welt in the ceiling became a wave that widened and bulged despite, despite the new roof. It had been beyond or building beyond perception for years. An old house is its own kind of devotional. A dowager aunt with a story to be coaxed out of her. A mystery, a series of interlocking puzzles awaiting solution. Why is this soffit tucked into the southeast corner of an eave? What is behind this discolored patch of brick? With an old house, the work is never done, and you don't expect it to be. America is an old house. We can never declare the work over. Wind, flood, drought, and human upheavals batter a structure that is already fighting whatever flaws were left unattended in the original foundation. When you live in an old house, you may not want to go into the basement after a storm to see what the rains have wrought. Choose not to look, however, at your own peril. The owner of an old house knows that whatever you are ignoring will never go away. Whatever is lurking will fester whether you choose to look at it or not. Ignorance is no protection from the consequence of inaction. Whatever you are wishing away will not you until you gather the courage to face what you would rather not see. We in the developed world are like homeowners who inherited a house on a piece of land that is beautiful on the outside, but whose soil is unstable, loam, and rock. Heaving and contracting over generations, cracks patched, but the deeper ruptures waved away for decades, centuries even. Many people might say, I had nothing to do with how this all started. I have nothing to do with the sins of the past. My ancestors never attacked indigenous people, never owned slaves. And yes, not one of us was here when this house was built. Our immediate ancestors may have had nothing to do with it, but here we are, the current occupants of a property with stress cracks and bowed walls and fissures built into the foundation. We are the heirs to whatever is right or wrong with it. We did not erect the uneven pillars or joists, but they are here for us to deal with now. And any further deterioration is, in fact, on our hands. Unaddressed, the ruptures and diagonal cracks will not fix themselves. The toxins will not go away, but rather will spread, leach, and mutate as they already have. When people live in an old house, they come to adjust to the idiosyncrasies and outright dangers skulking in an old structure. 
They put buckets under a wet ceiling, prop up groaning floors, learn to step over that rotting wood tread in the staircase. The awkward becomes acceptable and the unacceptable becomes merely inconvenient. Live with it long enough and the unthinkable becomes normal. Exposed over the generations, we learn to believe that the incomprehensible is the way that life is supposed to be. The inspector was facing the mystery of the mishap and ceiling. So he first held a sensor to the surface to detect if it was damp. The reading, inconclusive. He then pulled out the infrared camera to take some kind of an x-ray, whatever was going on. The idea being that you cannot fix a problem until and unless you can see it. He could now see past the plaster beyond what had been wallpapered or painted over, as we now are called upon to do in the house we all live in, to examine a structure built long ago. Like other old houses, America has an unseen skeleton, caste system that is as central to its operation as are the studs and joists that we cannot see in the physical buildings we call home. Caste is the infrastructure of our divisions, is the architecture of human hierarchy, the subconscious code of instructions for maintaining, in our case, a 400 year old social order. Looking at caste is like holding the country's X-ray up to the light. A caste system is an artificial construction, a fixed and embedded ranking of human values that sets the presumed supremacy of one group against the presumed inferiority of other groups on the basis of ancestry and often immutable traits, traits that would be neutral in the abstract but are ascribed life and death meaning in a hierarchy favoring the dominant caste whose forebears designed it. The caste system uses rigid, often arbitrary boundaries to keep the ranking groups apart, distinct from one another and in their assigned places. Throughout human history, three caste systems have stood out. The tragically accelerated chilling and unofficial vanquished caste system of Nazi Germany. The lingering millennia long caste system of India and the shape shifting unspoken race-based caste system in the United States. Each version relies on the stigmatization or stigmatizing those deemed inferior to justify the dehumanization needed or necessary to keep the lowest ranked people at the bottom and to rationalize the protocols of enforcement. A caste system endures because it is, because it is often justified as, as just justified as defined or divine will originating from sacred text or the presumed laws of nature, reinforced throughout the culture and passed down through the generations. As we go on about our daily lives, cast is the wordless usher in a darkened theater. Flashlights cast down in the aisles, guiding us to our assigned seats for a performance. The hierarchy of caste is not only about feelings or morality, it is about power, which groups have it and which groups not. It is about resources, which caste is seen as worthy of them and which are not, and who gets to acquire and control them and who does not. It is about respect, authority, and assumption of competence, who is accorded these and who is not. As a means of assigning value to entire swaths of humankind, caste guides each of us beyond the reaches of our awareness. It embeds into our bones as an unconscious ranking of human characteristics and sets forth the rules or sets forth the rules, expectations and stereotypes that have been used to justify brutalities against entire groups within our species. In the American caste system, the signal of rank is what we call race, the division of humans on the basis of their appearance. In America, race is the primary tool and the visible decoy, the front man for caste.